Okay, so we're going to talk about function values as lengths of line segments and the unit circle. So you, you might remember, you know, we, we've talked about our previous right triangle trig definitions. We've talked a lot about like how uh, we have like certain geometry and like uh, certain angle measures that you can tie together with line segments. And so the, the question is, how does that all relate to the unit circle? So that's what we're going to address in this video. So I'm going to take the unit circle and I've, I've drawn this, this ray here. So we'll say that this is my um, initial side. Here's my terminal side. So I'm going to draw around this um, a, a few other line segments that seem like maybe they're not related, but we're actually going to find that they have some really cool relationships. So let's start with the standard. So I, I have this point here, um, P. So I'm just going to draw down, remember this, from back in the day with trig. So I've got this right triangle here. And then also I'm going to extend, so where this ray hits the, the circle, I'm gonna go ahead and, and create this point R and extend it upward. And then just where my unit circle meets the Y axis here, I'm going to create this other line segment. And I'm going to continue this out. I'm gonna continue out this side of my terminal side to get this other point U. So I've got these like different points that don't seem like they really have anything to do with one another, but they do, they do, just hold on. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and label this point here where they connect, we'll, we'll call this V. And then in here, we'll call this my theta. Okay, now before I get too far into this, I just wanna point out a few things to you, okay? So this triangle, and this larger triangle, so I'll say that again, this little triangle here, this is the right triangle, and this triangle right here, these are similar, right? They are actually similar triangles. I want you just to notice that. And then the other thing I just wanna point out here, this line and this line, these are parallel. So this line coming through ends up as, acting as a transversal line. Okay, so remember all that as we go through the next parts of this, okay? So what I want to do is I want to determine the values of my trig functions, but I want to do it using line segments from this little picture that I've drawn here. And this is where we find some cool relationships. So cosine of theta, I know that that's adjacent over um, the hypotenuse. Now we can be clever in how we do this, okay? We have a lot of different options actually because of how we've drawn this. So my adjacent side, there's kind of two different ways I could think of this. I could think of this as O Q or I could think of this as O R and if I chose it, so I can choose either side and then for my hypotenuse I can think of it as O P or O V. Okay so it you just have to stay consistent so either I'm going to use the the green points as the end of my line segments or the pink points as the end of my line segments. You know what I will go ahead and I will use the green points for now. So I'm going to take OQ over OP. Okay, so I want to just notice something with the unit circle. I know this length here, right? It's the unit circle, so this is just the length of 1. So if this is 1, I can actually say what the value of cosine of theta is. It's just OQ, right? It's just the length of that line segment. So right here, OQ. So that is kind of interesting. Um, so whatever this line segment is, maybe normally we wouldn't think that, you know, it's the value of our trig function, but in this case, you know, it, it does just come out to the length of this line segment here since the other line segment is equal to one. Okay, so party on, let's keep going. So, all right, sine of theta, so opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so, you know, there's a couple different ways that we could think about this, um, but I'm going to think about this similar to what we were doing before. So here's my theta, here's my opposite side, PQ, and then here's my hypotenuse, OP. So I can write PQ over OP, and again, I know that this OP is equal to 1, right? So sine of theta is equal to the length of the line segment, uh, PQ this little line segment in here. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so let's keep going. So now let's talk about tangent of theta, which I know is normally opposite over adjacent, right? Okay, so here's my theta. 
And okay, so in this case, my opposite over my adjacent, I'm going to switch the way that I think about this. I'm, I'm going to make a little sleight of hand here, if you will. So remember, I have this right triangle here, but I also have this larger right triangle out here, right? So I could, I could also say my opposite side is equal to VR and my adjacent side would be equal to OR. So now I'm utilizing the pink points over the green points. Okay, so VR over QR, or over, sorry, OR, OR. Okay, and once again, I know the length of OR, right? So again, this is the unit circle, so from here to here, this is gonna be a length of one. So the, the, the line segment VR, we've actually figured out what the length of it is. I'm sorry, you might hear my, my dog barking in the background. So this is pretty interesting, actually. We're, we're like coming up with the lengths of these line segments by, and, and using just our, our trig functions to do that. Okay, so let's keep going with this. So what about secant of theta? So now that's gonna be the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. So I could use kind of the, the same reasoning. So using my OV as my hypotenuse, and then my adjacent side will be OR. So if I set that up, OV over OR, I know once again that this is a length of one. So this line segment here, OV is just the value of secant theta. Okay, next let's talk about cosecant of theta, which is the hypotenuse over the opposite side. Okay, so I, I want to use, like I've already kind of exhausted all the sides of this triangle, right? So what I would like to do is I would like to rethink where theta is so that I can try to figure out, can I figure out like these other line segments out here that we haven't used yet? So remember, these are parallel lines and so we've got this transversal line in here. So I know that this theta is equal to this theta. That's one of the properties of working with transversal lines. So with that in mind, I can rethink of this then for my, hypot my hypotenuse over my opposite side. So I'm gonna use this theta now. So my hypotenuse in this case will be this OU, this whole thing will be the hypotenuse and then this OS here, this will be the opposite side. So you've got this right triangle right here, you see that? And then you've got the, here's where the right angle is. So I'm kind of viewing it all, you know, upside down, but this would be the new hypotenuse and then this would be the opposite side. And, and so once again, OS, this is on the unit circle. So I know the length of this, it's equal to one. So now the value of cosecant is the, also the value of this line segment here, OU. Finally, we have cotangent, which is gonna be the opposite side over the, uh, or sorry, the adjacent side over the opposite side. And once again, I'm, I'm gonna to continue to use this alternate theta to figure this out. So my adjacent side is this SU in this case, and then I still have this, um, I still have this side OS for my other side. So now, I can say that my cotangent of theta, that's my US side over my OS side. This is once again equal to one, so cotangent is equal to US. So what we have done here is we came up with all these line segments. We used the, the unit circle and some random angle. I don't even know what this theta is, right? So I, I need to be told what that is. But we found this relationship between the length of the line segments and the value of the trig functions. So in summary, these are all of the different little line segments, how we can find the length of them by using trig functions. So trig functions aren't just getting you angle measure, sometimes they can get you other surprising measures as well. So if I were to now use this in a question, so let's say that I've got this angle TVU and it's gonna be 45 degrees and I wanna find various line segments. I asked you to do that. Okay, so TVU, so TVU, this is the angle that we're talking about here, this angle in here. And the line segments are this one right here and this one right here. 
which we totally were just talking about undefined, right? And then from what we were talking about with transversal lines, this angle is 45 degrees. And so then also I just happen to know that this angle is also 45 degrees. But we, we can just use our, our previously discussed relationships, all of this, to figure out the lengths of these line segments. So we've really got everything that we need now in this picture, and now we know the, the angle measure, so it's it's gonna just come together very easily. So just use, so keep these handy. Okay, so for OQ, that's going to be equal to, so remember, we just figured this out, OQ is equal to cosine of theta, and OU is equal to cosecant of theta. So now instead of having some random theta, I can actually plug in that angle measure, and then I can use my unit circle. So here I am at 45 degrees, and then I can figure the rest of this out. So I would get, in the case of OQ, this would be square root of two over two, and then for OU, this would just be square root of two. So pretty interesting stuff here. I mean, okay, mildly interesting stuff. <laughs> so, um, all right, I've got, these other line segments. So I have this summary here of how to figure out those lengths. So just using that, you should be able to figure these out. So let's go ahead and do OV together. So for OV, that's just gonna be equal to my, my secant of theta. So I can just plug in 45 degrees. And so secant of 45 degrees is just gonna be square root of two. That's the length of the OV segment. What about VR? So for VR, this is gonna be equal to tangent of 45 degrees. So I can just plug that in and get one. So I highly recommend that you pause the video here just to do the other two, just to make sure that you've got it, and then hit play when you're ready. So for the last two, I've got the, the US is gonna be cotangent of 45 degrees and PQ is sine of 45 degrees. So just working those out, I get one and square root of two over two. So that's it. I mean, we, we figured them all out. So kind of an interesting set of relationships that you, you wouldn't think you'd, you'd get from trig functions. And so that's all I have for this video, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.